one of the things we need to remind ourselves is that a kingdom is not a religion a kingdom is a governmental authority influencing a territory but we talk about credentials because we are focusing in on kingdom representation so uh, second corinthians chapter 5 is one of the foundation scriptures that we have been using and this is found in the 20th verse it says we are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God was making his appeal through us uh, there are a number of names or titles that that the Word of God gives us uh, one of the most important ones is the one that Jesus himself gives us he calls us sons of God Genesis uh, is evidence of why we are sons of God we were birthed out of God's spirit in his image in John chapter 1 we find these words as many as believed on him to them gave he the power the word that means authority or authorization to call themselves sons of God so I want you to write that down son of God that's one title that we are sure Jesus tells us to call ourselves sons of God he himself called himself son of God capital S and then he says we've been given authorization by him to call ourselves sons of God so we have the same qualification the same standard as Christ he gave it to us another word that is used to describe us is the word saints so you can call yourself a saint the Bible says that we are saints it's from Jesus's prayer Jesus prayer is in John 17 he calls these statements he says sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth Paul therefore refers to the believer as saints saints means that which is set apart for a specific use so to sanctify means to set something apart for a specific use that means if you are a believer you've received the authority of Christ in your life then you've been set apart for a specific use by the kingdom of God which makes sense an ambassador is a sanctified person they're set apart only to represent their government another word used to describe us in the Bible is the word citizen citizen everybody say citizen write that down citizen is is a legal creature a citizen is a description given to a person who is who belongs to a state citizenship uh, and I think this particular reference about us is one that I believe we we're gonna focus on a little bit in this series next year on the kingdom but I do think that it's one that we need to appreciate a little bit more because the Bible specifically says we are our citizenship is in heaven and I wanted to to give a little reference to that uh, in the book of Philippians Philippians chapter 3 can we turn there for a minute I just want you to see it because sometimes you know people say well I hear a teacher talk about things a reference but I don't ever see it in the Bible so let's read it where we see it in the Bible uh, a citizen is an important description given to to us by God uh, Philippians chapter 3 by the way are you about to see a connection to our session our last session just in this statement watch this Philippians chapter 3 turn there get it all right look at verse 19 their destiny is destruction now he's referring to people who are not following the way of the kingdom so let's see now what he says about them their destiny is destruction their God is their stomachs or their belly the King James would say and their glory is in their shame and that's the way we used to be we used to live to eat 
that word stomach there is not just referring to food it's referring to materialism we should just live just to, to make a living just to get stuff to buy things to keep you know rent paid to keep mortgage paid I mean, their stomachs they were they are driven by survival and that's the way we were now watch this their mind is on earthly things remember we talked about that they are living according to the lower level kingdom their mind is on earthly things they now earthly things doesn't mean that the earth is bad referring to below heaven they live according to the systems below heaven that's why they're glorious their shame so this group of people the way we used to live the way we used to be uh, the, this is what we used to be when we didn't know any better and I want to say that he's referring not just to unbelievers he's referring to, to religious people their mind is on earthly things they think about how to live according to the systems of the world look at the next statement but our citizenship is where now underline that please Mark up your Bible right here. This is important. He said, but for you, your citizenship is not even from earth. Our citizenship is in heaven. I like the way it's written. In heaven. You know, I just came back from England. But when I was in England, I had my passport with me. And my passport never says this belongs to Miles Monroe. If you read your passport, it always says property of the Bahamas government. In other words, the picture in this passport is of a person and that person does not belong to themselves. Everybody with me? When you are a citizen, you become property of a state. Clear? Clear. So your passport is an indicator that you are not your own. That's why it says every path, the American passport, the Bahamas passport, the Jamaican passport, the Haitian passport, all the passports will say the same thing. They will say property of the country. You belong to the state. So citizenship is a serious description of us so when I was in England guess where my citizenship was in the Bahamas no matter where I travel I belong to the Bahamas praise God so no matter where I am my citizenship is not where I am it is in the place I am from. Some of y'all getting this yet? Now look at where yours is from. But our citizenship is not even on earth. Now we are on earth. And Genesis 126 becomes important in this statement now because the Bible says, let them have dominion over the earth. Even though they are from where I am, God says, they will function on this place. But they are never to depend on the place for their survival. So the verse before that, read it. Their mind is on what? Earthly things. He said, now the people who are not in the kingdom of God, they survive by what they could get on earth. Or should I say from the earthly systems. My God, imagine waking up in the morning, eh? And for the whole week, you are in a place but don't belong there. Or you don't depend on your environment to live anymore. You, you don't, I mean, what, what freedom? What freedom? Your citizenship is in heaven. Praise God. Now, I want to read, therefore, this fourth description. So we got 
oh by the way uh, the Bible never calls us you know Jesus never does Paul never does Peter never does James never does John never does call us Christians so we've adopted a name that was never given to us now the reason why I really have a problem with the term Christian you know I mean you know I use it most of my life I was saved for over 30 years but the reason why I have a problem with it is because it has become such a religious concept that it's tough to call yourself a Christian without being religious <laughs> a citizen is not a religious creature citizenship is a legal creature citizenship is a result of a contract between a government and the people it's a contract that's why there has to be a constitution where there's citizenship are you with me it's very important so but but a a Christian is the name that was invented by the pagans when they observed the lifestyle of these people who were kingdom people anybody with me it was an, it was a pagan perception of us well oh boy see the moment you become a religious person you are in the class with the other religions a Buddhist believes in Buddhism a Hindu believes in Hinduism a Muslim believes in Islam and a Christian believes in Christianity but now over here you got this group of people who are kingdom citizens <laughs> okay let me try another way you can always identify a religious person <laughs> I want you to get this please you, when, you, when, you, when you see a Hindu that's a Hindu they got the mark on the forehead and they got the little garb type and see Muslim that's a Muslim so you got a little white cap and they got the long dress and you know even when they're in the Bahamas in hot sun they still wearing long dress and tie the face up okay so so a religious person is identified right away a Christian you know them I love Jesus pin honk if you know Jesus sticker big white Bible you know looking ugly all the time I mean you know you know a Christian you know a Hindu you know a Buddhist you know a Muslim you know them but let me ask you a question uh, do you know who is a Bahamian I mean honestly think about it you don't see citizenship doesn't give you away You cannot attack something you can't find. Okay. The Hindus are fighting the Christians right now in Pakistan. The Muslims are fighting the Christians in northern Nigeria right now. Why? They identify themselves. They know who to fight. But how do you fight somebody you can't identify? That's why they couldn't even figure out who was Jesus to crucify him. That they used someone to pick him out. you see our problem you're an ambassador I like that everybody's ambassador praise God okay let's do a quick review an ambassador the Bible says we are ambassadors of Christ our citizenship is from heaven or in heaven which means that we are on earth representing heaven as ambassadors and we talk about ambassadors real quick let's review it an ambassador is what out loud a represent of the highest rank sent by a state okay so that's what you are so I want you to stop thinking religion now you are a political appointee all right secondly the ambassador becomes what the property of the state and embodies the state okay so right away you know what you are you are property of heaven even though you live on earth 
and you embody heaven okay thirdly say it out loud the primary responsibility of an ambassador is what to seek the interests of his nation and influence the territory for his government now that's why you live every day you don't live now watch this it's important you don't live to make a living it's a paradigm shift got to take place right now God didn't give you birth to pay bills read that again read it out loud the responsibility of ambassador is what to seek the interests of his nation and to influence the territory for his government now that is why you were born let them have dominion over the earth for me God says this is important switch in your mind see most of your life is spent trying to pay bills don't lie to me you go to a job and you don't want to miss work because you don't want your pay cut and you go and you hope to get a raise you hope to get promotion why you want more money so you could buy more things so basically your life is built around what you could get with money look at that assignment it's completely opposite your only interest your only motivation should be to do what seek the interest of your nation and to influence the territory for your government now if that is your responsibility then guess who's supposed to take care of you naturally the government if they appointed you assigned you then they are responsible for you okay I'm gonna try something else is gonna be a little interesting watch this watch this everyone who runs in a political election that's a personal choice am I right come on think about it a person enters the political arena by their personal decision they decide to go there and make this earth, you know available okay guess what an ambassador doesn't an ambassador is usually mind someone who's mind their own business and they get a phone call <laughs> completely opposite the ambassador doesn't even it's not someone who's desiring position everybody with me because ambassadorial credentials are given by choice of the leader not choice of the ambassador I'm getting at something which means that once you are chosen you are free from the society oh I just said something deep see as long as you haven't been chosen as an ambassador you gotta run around trying to pay bills and keep bell you know keep things in the house and, and keep gas in the car and, and keep the light bill paying because you see man you, you gotta survive but the moment if ever you get that phone call the phone call also is deliverance from the systems <laughs> once you've been chosen by the king or by the president of the country once they appoint you they deliver you from worry some of you are getting it I can feel it here some of you getting it. see the point is to get chosen not to run for a seat religious people jive and jockey for position How much fights going on in the religious arena right now in the churches in your country think about the fighting fighting to be elder fighting to be deacon fighting to be assistant pastor fighting to be in charge of the prayer band fight and they mad they're killing each other everyone trying to get position and God is saying what is this mess that you all call church but in the kingdom of God once he appoints you he also at the same time pulls you out of the system and now the government is personally responsible for you are you getting it so you got to stop being a Christian otherwise you got to pay your own bills <laughs> what I'm trying to do I believe the Lord has called us as a ministry to be one of the 
unique groups of people in the 21st century who will get it i believe we're gonna get it some we're gonna get it we're gonna say god can say wow i found a group of folks who got it and they're gonna have diplomatic immunity chosen what's the last one the purpose of an ambassador is what diplomacy which is what pronounce it the way i pronounce it international relations okay get it that way so you can understand what it is the international kind of in, in your mind means go everywhere but the word means internation that means with nations between nations that's what an ambassador is okay so really <laughs> your purpose as an ambassador is diplomacy diplomacy is relations between nations or kingdoms wow so all week you're supposed to be constantly checking the relationship between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the world the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the world and make sure you don't slip into the kingdom of the world you gotta understand how to deal with the kingdom of the world you gotta learn the other kingdom so you can know how to relate to them sometimes we're so confused we're not sure which is which sometimes we've been in the kingdom of the world so long we're not sure we're still in it or not you gotta study the kingdoms the Bible says be not ignorant of Satan's devices uh, he controls that other kingdom okay he's a prince of what darkness ignorance he controls that kingdom so we got to know how to relate to the kingdom of darkness and how to stay away from its influence all right okay we gave you a list of qualities of ambassadors let's go down real quick okay there's 14 i gave you number one is what an ambassador is what out loud appointed by the king number two appointed to represent the state number three is committed only to the state's interest number four embodies the state or nation number five only speaks government's position number six is totally covered by the government number seven never becomes a citizen of the state he is assigned number eight can only be recalled by the king or the ruler number nine has access to all the nation's wealth and power number ten his goal is to influence the territory for the state number eleven all his needs are met by the state number twelve he's totally protected by the government and number thirteen he possesses diplomatic immunity and number eight Number, number 15 14 sorry he must remain in constant contact and communication with the government all right I want you to remember that list that is your personal lifestyle for the rest of your life the list you got right now you could print it put it on your mirror where you fix your feet here brush your teeth memorize this list and that is your right that's your list of rights that's ambassadorial privileges it's called diplomatic privilege that is how you're supposed to live with that consciousness right there now I want you to look at a, a verse and let's talk a little bit about what ambassadorial appointment I like this every ambassador got to be appointed okay ambassadors are appointed and delegated authority and power to represent the government so they must be chosen by the king or the president or whoever let's read if this works in the scripture John chapter 15 verse 15 says you did not choose me Jesus is speaking but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that word means productive fruit that will last then the father will give you whatever you ask in my name I want to stop right here and preach for three years could you believe that statement now I know you read that many times some of you have been reading the Bible but you never understood that verse until now look at, read the verse again look at the verse he says first of all no one voted you in and you didn't choose to become an ambassador See, I told you, uh, you know, when you run for a seat in government, 
you make the choice but if when it comes to an ambassador mm -mm, the government seeks you out and the government that choose chooses you but look at the word jesus used appointed you also an appointment means that it was a 100 percent choice by the appointer hallelujah you know it doesn't matter what your background was where you was born what you did you know that god doesn't make jesus has appointed prostitutes to change the world like rahab i mean you would think if you want to change the world you don't pick up a big mouth uneducated fisherman but you see the the, the, the king has that prerogative I mean, if you're glad he chose you in Jesus' name. Now, come on, just say amen. amen. Now, you know, man, some of y'all like me, you know, I was born in Baintown, man. You know, I was born in a, in, a, in a lowly situation. But look, when the king called for you, you put on your best and you go. <laughs> God doesn't care what people think about you. Once he chooses you, you become government appointee but look at the last statement man that thing blesses me it says now once you've been appointed and you decide okay I am going to be fruitful write the word down productive I am going to produce for my government now watch this the last statement says then my father <laughs> Guess who that is? That's the one in charge of the warehouse. I'm a shout. Ooh, Jesus, forgive me. See, see, the, the, the Father is not on earth. Jesus never puts the Father on earth. He always puts him in heaven. He said, when you pray, don't pray, our Father who's on earth. Because the Father is where the warehouse is. Y'all ain't got it. Everything, he is where the headquarters is. He is, he is at, he, he's at home. He's, he's He's the chief in charge of the government. He's in charge of government stores. Inventory. He's man, you all say something. Man. He's in charge of all the stuff. He says, now look, if you want to get the stuff out of the warehouse, you got to first be appointed and then start being productive. And everything you need to carry out your assignment, the father will make sure you get it. That's government responsibility. Look how he tied whatever you ask to appointment. Okay, let me put it this way. You don't just ask for anything. Read that carefully. You have to ask what is necessary for your appointment. Oh Lord, have mercy. If you are supposed to represent God in the world of business, that's where he appointed you and he assigned you there. Then that means you got to be a successful business person. So now you can ask the father for whatever you need for your business. Anybody getting this? Isn't only me excited? You see, once you discover what his appointment is for your life, then you've also discovered everything you need. Let me tie it to something else. Therefore, prosperity is provisions for purpose. See, God, oh man, let me tell you something. God, isn't, God doesn't want to give you $5 million for you to buy a golf club and drive around a nice car, wear fancy clothes, and smoke a cigar. God, God what are you talking about? That's crazy. God wants you to prosper based on what you need to do. Y'all don't understand. That's why most people are still poor. Because what they have settled to do is so cheap. It don't take much for God to meet the needs. Anybody understand that statement? Are you sure? See, if you settle, okay, you just settle, okay, all I want to do for God is this. God said, no problem, I'll pay for that. But if you ever discover your assignment, it might demand $20 million. It may need that you, it may require that you need a good car because of who you got to carry around for God. 
So God will give you a good car, not because you want a good car, but because your status in your assignment requires you have a good work. So now, it is no longer whether you could afford a car, it's whether the kingdom could afford for you not to have one based on the assignment it gave you. I'm going to shout by myself. So your wealth, it's not a matter of you begging for money. See there? It is for you discovering the appointment first. Yes. If God gave you an assignment and it requires that you entertain a lot of people, then God got to give you a big house. See, the big house is not for you and your children to walk around this big empty house. It depends on your assignment. You might not need a big house. How many folks you know got a big house, all the kids are gone now, now they got to sell it because the big house is too much to maintain, so they go back and get an apartment, and they got plenty of money, but they don't need the big house. Why? Because the big house is not for the person. Jesus, Lord. When you visit an ambassador's residence, go down there right now on West Bay Street, the U.S. ambassador. He got a big house, sprawling yard. I mean, acres. I've been there many times. And when we go there, we go there, you know, the United States uh, uh, July 4th celebration. They invite dignitaries like myself. We go. We go there, and they got the whole yard, tents up and food everywhere. Big yard. And all hundreds of people walking around, you know, sipping coke and thing, you know, and talking. And all these dignitaries talking. I said, I see why the man needs a big yard. Come on, y'all ain't get it. See, because of his role, they got to give him what he needs. You might be living in a house that doesn't go with your assignment. But you're so excited about this little three bed bedroom house. God's okay, if that's what you want, then he let you have it. Look at the, read, read, read the last verse, read it, read it, read the last statement, read it again out loud, read it, go. Then the Father, then the Father will give you whatever you ask. Once you are appointed, then you activate the storehouse. Hallelujah. This ministry, see, I don't think and worry about what we need. Once I discovered the assignment, I knew what I have to get from heaven. <laughs> Once you discover what you were born to do, to be, everything that you need to do it is now available. So what do you ask the Father for? You ask the Father for whatever you are appointed to do. Ambassador. Tell your neighbor I'm, a, I'm an ambassador. Now, whatever you're dreaming, whatever whatever God is making you dream, that's an indication of your account. Y'all look at y'all all right? Scream, man. Y'all understand what I see? That's the problem. Y'all ain't got it yet. I said <laughs> once you discovered what he's telling you to do, you've also discovered your account. You could draw down. Why? He wouldn't make you dream that big if the storehouse didn't have the stuff for you. That's what I'm talking about. He says, once you are chosen appointed, then you can ask the Father. Whatever you need. So for this ministry, we're asking the Father for millions. We got to build, you know, the Leadership Institute millions of dollars we got to build a christian resort in andres is millions of dollars we got to build a a, a a media center for millions of dollars we got to build a, a home for age people so they can teach in the school and die properly we got millions of dollars we got to get so i know how big the account is for our ministry it's as big as the assignment now suppose i had to depend on your tithes and offerings Which goes with how you feel, depending on how you feel that day. You think God will ever get his work done? No way. <laughs> Do you understand? The minute you tap, no, suppose I depend on the banks. Lord, have mercy. Suppose you depend on the charity of society to do God's work. You see, you right away you fell to the earthly system. But my citizenship is where? In heaven. Remember, the, 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 the ambassador never becomes a citizen of the country he is in. And number 
two, he's always as wealthy as the country he is from. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, we got a young lady sitting in the back there. She works for the US, U.S. Embassy. I won't point her up because, you know, for various reasons. But she will tell you, you know, everything is shipped in. Shipped in direct from America. Every, shipped in. Whatever they need, shipped in. They control the quality of food the people eat in that embassy. No contamination by the local country. This is serious. See, the meat from the local people may be contaminated, so they make sure that the government sends the government inspected beef. In other words, God don't want you just to get any money. He wants you to get money that heaven had a stamp on. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. That's another place altogether. Not according to what's going on locally in your economy. This is going to be a good week for you. I just feel it. This is going to be a good week for you in Jesus' name. Now, what does the term in Jesus' name mean? In the authority of the king. You have a good week. Amen. Amen. Look at this next statement. Boy, this one blesses me. John 16 verse 14. Ambassadorial statement now. Watch this. All that belongs to the Father is mine. Jesus speaking. That is why I said, the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. This is a serious government statement he's making. Now remember, an ambassador is designed or appointed to represent his government. So whatever the government knows, it tells the ambassador. Jesus said, look, uh, by the way, let me describe Jesus for you, okay? Write this word down. Secretary of State. Secretary of State. Write this word down next to it. Minister of Foreign Affairs. Okay. So in the parliamentary democracy, we call that person Minister of Foreign Affairs. In the Republic, we call them Secretary of State. It's the same person. In the Bahamas, we have a Minister of Foreign Affairs. In America, we have a Secretary of State. It's the same person. What is a Secretary of State? Who is a Minister of Foreign Affairs? Definition. They are the Chief Ambassador. Write that down. They are the Chief Ambassador. They are the ambassador of the ambassadors. They, they are responsible for all the ambassadors. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Jesus is, Jesus is an amazing position. He is Savior, so he saves the citizens. Then he is King. So he gives them, he is their big brother. He gives them royal etiquette training. But he's also Secretary of State. He is the chief ambassador. He's the chief representative of God. He is the son of the sons. <laughs> That's why he's king of the kings. Everybody following this? Now tie it to this verse. Watch this. He's talking to his disciples, not to the world, just to his group, you and I. He says, look, all that belongs to the Father is mine. He's not talking about people. He's talking about information. He's talking about resources. He's talking about power, authority, anointing, whatever the Father have. He says, it also belongs to me. The government has put in my hands everything. Praise God. The Father has put everything in my hand. Ooh, I can't wait to get to where I'm going. <laughs> now, read the next statement. He says, and I have turned it all over 
to you. Okay, Colin Powell at the moment is the Secretary of State for the United States. He is the most powerful voice in America. No, for the whole nation of the United States, he's the most powerful position. When he speaks, America speaks. Colin Powell. Now, there are many ambassadors of the United States all over the world. There's one here in the Bahamas as well. He is in charge of that ambassador. <laughs> now, the person sitting back there working for the embassy will tell you that they get instructions not from Bush. Isn't that amazing? They get instructions from Colin Powell's office, the State Department. This is important. See, we keep wanting to go direct to Bush. Let me tell you something. If an ambassador picks the phone up, and bypasses colon trouble violate authority line of authority he's got to call the state department everybody following me jesus said look you don't go to the father direct <laughs> you gotta call me first you gotta call my you gotta get my name there first and once you get my name okay then you can go straight to the warehouse Y'all ain't ready to shout yet. Colin Powell gets all the information from President Bush. So he meets with President Bush, depending on whether he's traveling or not, every morning for breakfast. You read that in the newspaper all the time, in the Central Guardian, I mean in the, in the magazine, they say they have their, their meeting every morning, where they get together every morning for breakfast. If he's in America, he meets with the Bush, with, with the President, and they sit, and the President and he talk about the state of the world state of affairs and what the president wants once he gets instructions from the president now he becomes the embodiment of the nation and he sends a circular she will tell you that every morning to all the ambassadors office they get this, this circular and it's all the up-to-date information the president just got gave the, 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 the secretary it's just like any other kingdom read it all that belongs to the father is mine he told me everything he, <laughs> he said now tell you what i'm gonna do i'm gonna send you an a memo every day you get a memo from jesus and i'm gonna shout here's what i want you guys to take over today here's what i want you to influence here's what i want you to do why don't worry about the money don't worry about the cost i got it all covered just Seek ye first the kingdom interest first. And everything you need will be added. Hallelujah. What a powerful statement. All that is the Father's is mine. That is why I said, the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. That's why you need the Holy Spirit, eh? I say you need the Holy Spirit. Write this down. The Holy Spirit is the grain form. Natural. It works, doesn't it? The Holy Spirit is the one who is the communication link. He keeps you in touch with the government constantly, every day, all day. And he knows what's happening in the meeting. Matter of fact, here's another word for Holy Spirit. Write this down. Paracletus. P-A-R-A-C-L-E-T-E-S. Now the word paracletus is the it's our modern word for secretary what does a secretary do in a board meeting take minutes that's the Holy Spirit's job he takes the minutes in the meeting every time the chief meets with the father they take minutes and then he reveals Jesus said, okay, send the memo out. Holy Ghost talks to everybody who is connected with him. You're supposed to know what to do tomorrow, all day. If you listen, meditate. Holy Spirit will guide you through the entire day. He tell you, even going to work, don't go this way this morning. Go another way, drive another way. I mean, you listen to the secretary. He knows the minutes. He knows the plan for the day already. That's why you got to spend time with him first thing every day. Get your memo.
it's not religion this thing is real praise God he tell you yeah go to the food store but not this one today yeah, but God I see the gold rest of the food store why you see because the memo says there's someone in that food store who got your money in their pocket and you gotta meet them because that's the one they're going to see some of y'all been in the wrong food store a long time and someone else got your blessing praise God because you ain't listening to the memo The Spirit will reveal to you everything that I know, Jesus says. Oh boy. Look at the next statement, eh? And Jesus said, Peace be with you. John 20, 21. Just as the Father sent me as an ambassador, so send I you as an ambassador. The same way the Father told me everything that I'm telling you, I'm telling you everything so you can tell them in the world. Just like the Father sent me, so send I you. I'm a rep, you're a rep. I'm an ambassador, you're an ambassador. I got information, now you got information. What a wonderful relationship. Luke 22 verse 28, this one I thought was interesting. One of those secret scriptures you haven't read until now, right? This is in the Bible, it's in your Bible. Jesus said to the disciples, where disciples mean students, those in training, ambassadors in training he says and I confer on you a kingdom just as my father conferred one on me find that in your Bible circle it please that's a powerful statement eh? confer confer a kingdom <laughs> he doesn't just confer blessings See, we keep running after blessings, man. What are you talking about blessings? He's given you the entire government. Have you noticed every time an ambassador comes to a country for the first time, any country, they first got to go and meet the head of the state. And then they got to present them with their credentials, they call it. Well, there's your credentials right there. You've been conferred on by the state of heaven through the authority of Jesus, the right to represent the kingdom of God for the rest of your life. That means wherever you go, you are not to be pushed around. You deserve diplomatic courtesy. Man, listen to me, y'all. All this stuff about, you know, suffering for Jesus on the job. Listen, that over today. That over. When you go to work, you say, excuse me now. From now on, let me tell you all who I am here. I'm no longer religious. Forgive me for being religious all these years, messing you up. I discovered my legal status. From this day forward, I want everyone to know, if you ever want to know what's happening in heaven, you can come and talk to me. That's the announcement on your job. If you want to see what heaven is like, please observe my life, everybody. How's that for a tough assignment? If you never, if you ever need any assistance from heaven, just come to my office. If you're sick, my government got healing systems that are not limited to medication. You can check with me at lunch and I'll fix you up. If you're confused, don't know how to get things sorted out, you don't know what to do in life, my government has some systems of guidance. And you come to me, we'll work it out. I'll show you how to know what to do. I'll give you heavenly counsel. He's conferred on me the kingdom. This statement, let me tell you why this statement is so important. Because we think that Jesus came to earth to confer a religion. opposite he conferred a government on you you have a right to call yourself an ambassador the credentials now later on we're going to talk about proof of credentials but I'll give you a little preview the proof the proof of credentials is the powers that the person has okay so how much credential does the, the ambassador of the United States has in the Bahamas? He has the credentials of the powers of the United States government. <laughs> well, Jesus said, 
he's conferred upon you the kingdom so how do you prove your credentials by your demonstration of the power of your government in your own life some of you can get it afterwards whenever they ask Jesus who are you and how do we know you son of God he kept saying well I heal the sick I raise the dead I cleanse the leper I feed the poor I don't I did all these things I break bread he said he said the works that I do proves I am from the government man you only get it see if you broke all the time sick all the time depressed all the time frustrated all the time uh, your credentials ain't working because based on what you claim to represent you ain't showing it can I hear an amen your credentials is when people are sick you lay hands on them and they get healed in Jesus name now the reason why you don't pray for them is because you see you've been told by religion that only special people get that credential so you send them to Benny Hinn crusade that's your problem see you are religious all right here's a tough statement if you go to see the ambassador of the United States about something and he sends you to Colin Power what do you think will happen to his job he get fired no he'll be recalled sorry am I right she tell yeah in other words <laughs> you don't send <laughs> you don't send the, the person to your boss you handle it yourself now say something man stop sending people to pass the miles to pray for them tell them stop right here child I can take care of this why I've been conferred a kingdom the same one pastor miles got I got you got a problem come and pray for you and pray for them in the name of Jesus <laughs> hallelujah I am NOT the Secretary of State I'm an ambassador too <laughs> hallelujah all of us got to refer to the State Department to get things done I gotta use the same name you use to get things done he's conferred on me a kingdom just like what the father conferred on me he says you know it's amazing all right let's go to the next one I want to show you this watch the scripture the life of an ambassador I like this I want to kind of wrap up on some of this here the lifestyle of an ambassador is an interesting life uh, give you just a few to kind of hang your thoughts on Matthew 6 24 Jesus said speaking to ambassadors no one can serve two masters either he will love the one and hate the other or hate the one and love the other please forgive my typing there I was late in the night now I want you to see something here the first statement is important he says you cannot serve what two masters you cannot be an ambassador of two countries it never will happen in history so Jesus is saying look you cannot represent heaven and earth <laughs> you will confuse people if you did that because they ain't not sure who you speaking for anytime it's like people who claim to be believers but they're living like sinners are you with me you, you you know some of them right you used to be some of them on Sunday you was one person Monday's a different person he said look you're confusing me you can't serve two governments do you see how simple that is he's talking about representation he said, you can't serve two masters, two leaders, two governments, two kings. One time they were talking to Jesus about paying taxes, remember? Taxes. So they said, uh, you say you are from another kingdom. Should your disciples pay taxes to the kingdom of Rome? Jesus says, well, uh, let me see a, a coin, bring me some money. So they brought the money to him. 
He looked at it and he said, whose image is on that money? They said, Caesar. He said, good. He said, so? His image is on that. That means that's his. Whoever image God's is on is God's. <laughs> he said, look, I am clan my head about diplomatic relations. <laughs> when it comes to international relations, he says, I'm clear. Whatever Caesar asks for must be his, so give it to him. But whatever God asks for, you give it to him too. And what's so interesting is Caesar got his image on a coin, God got his image on your whole life. So you got double problems here now. You got to give your whole life to God. You can't serve two masters. Can't serve two governments. All right, look at the next statement. Interesting. Matthew 6 25. I like this. Therefore, I tell you, ambassadors, do not worry about your life what you will eat what you will drink or about your body what you will wear life is more than these wow now i'm still trying to figure this last statement out you know because you you and i would agree jesus must be a little bit confused he don't live in the bahamas oh he don't live in america he don't live where we live because where we live life is about all those things listed am i right Yes, it is for most of the people in the world. Life is about food and clothes and rent and, 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 and drink. It's about getting these things. He says, no, no, no. For my people, those things are not what you live for. Life is more than these. Praise God. So, and someone asks you, so how you doing? Oh, me? I'm working for the government. Really? Which government? It's out of this world. So what do you do? Oh, I'm involved in diplomatic relations. <laughs> By this time now, they're interested. You know that. What are you talking about? Well, you see, I live every day to represent my government in my territory. And my assignment is to influence my territory with my government's precepts and principles. What are you talking about? That's why I have no worries and I have no pressure. Why? Because my government says, I must never worry about anything. What to eat, what to drink, what to wear, how to live. Because my life is more than these things. I have more exciting things to worry about in life than food and clothes and rent. I'm worried about whether the influence of my government is happening where I am. Whether I'm being a good representative. Life is more than this. The next statement here. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, he says. And his righteousness. And all these things will be what? Given to you as well. As well. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Last night when I was meditating on this, I was meditating until about 2 o'clock this night. And this thing jumped out at me. And his righteousness. Write that down. And his righteousness. Don't just seek the government, but seek his righteousness. What is righteousness? right standing and positioning with an authority write that down what is righteousness right standing or right positioning with an authority it means to be aligned properly with an authority that's what righteousness means now read it again and put that definition in there seek first the authority of god and seek to remain properly aligned with it See the connection? You see, if you are not in good relationship with the government, you can't demand nothing from the government. If an ambassador is not in communication and fellowship with his government, he can't represent the government. So the two things you must seek. First, you must seek to understand and know, like you're doing right now in this session, to know the government, to know your authority, to know your rights. You got to know the powers of your government. He said, but also seek 
to stay in relationship with him listen if you sin that knocks you out of position I want you to get this man that's why you know I'm afraid to say something because I sound like a blasphemer I'm gonna try this the Bible doesn't talk much in New Testament about staying away from sin Jesus hardly ever talked about staying away from sin to the people he was talking about never talked about sin too much matter of fact the woman that was caught in adultery his words to her messes me up because he was even not on the cross yet and he said go and sin no more how could she do that without the Holy Spirit apparently he believed she could let me tell you something this is important you are supposed to be so busy you ain't got time to sin An ambassador is supposed to be so busy doing his diplomatic work, he ain't got time to be caught at the zoo. Could you imagine catching the U.S. ambassador at the zoo, 2 o'clock in the morning, bumping it with somebody, drinking liquor and smoking dope? Come on, talk to me. You, 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 what, what would you think? Now we got saints sleeping in bed with people they ain't married to. And singing in the choir the next day. Man, what are you doing? And then come and talk, but you won't get blessed from the government. You want privileges? He said, look, don't just seek my power and my authority, but seek to stay in relationship with me. The reason why you don't sin is because you don't want to cut the green telephone line. Are you with me? We shouldn't be discussing, you know, that's why, you know, people say, well, y'all don't preach against sin too much. I shouldn't be preaching against sin in this church. You ambassadors. Paul said this to the church many times. Paul says, let not these things be named among you. In other words, we shouldn't even be discussing this, he said. You ambassador, the minute you are appointed, your lifestyle is supposed to change immediately. You shocking up, you unshock. When you get born again, you unshot. I ain't married to you, I'm out of here. Why? I'm under another authority, I'm out of here. If you want to get married to me, we call it off now, I'm gone. That's ambassador authority. But we, we, we don't want to seek righteousness. And yet we want the privileges. Living right should not be something God got to keep telling you to do. It is something you should find necessary and natural. I don't sin. Why? I can't afford to do it. What an attitude. It interferes with my diplomatic relationships. Seek to maintain good connection with your government. That's what it means to be seek his righteousness. I think it hit me last night. We need to understand that this is not about you trying to stay away from sin. You're too busy. If you get so busy doing righteousness, you won't have any energy to sin.